before we get into today's video, we have to say a massive shout out to today's video sponsor, which is Cove. You guys have seen us use Cove quite a bit in the shop. This is their brand new Cove Commuter 2, and I will say this is the best thing that Cove has come out with yet, but don't just take my word for it. Let's see what Mickey thinks about it in the garage. In the shop we just connect to Bluetooth and then you pretty much have 360 surround sound right there at your fingertips. One thing you guys may not see is we listen to music all the time. The coolest thing about this new Cove Commuter 2 is you can split it up into two speakers. No, what? So if one person's using one bay or one lift they can have one speaker and the other person can use the other. Now on one charge you're gonna get up to seven hours of battery life so that's also a pretty big plus with the Commuter 2. Now right now, Cove is running a sale. If you use our promo code, which is right on the screen right here, you can save over 64% off your Cove Commuter 2, and it's only good until the end of this month. So check out the link in the description. A huge shout out to Cove for sponsoring today's video and for supporting the channel for a very long time. Thank you guys so much and enjoy today's video. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. I'm Mickey Andrade and I'm gonna be your host today. We're gonna to be bringing you guys some more Suzuki Cappuccino content as you can see behind me here. Today we're gonna to go ahead and retrofit these headlights on the cappuccino. It's probably pretty easy for you guys to understand that since this car is from 1993, so is the lighting. And I'll be honest, it's really dim and very yellowy looking. The cool thing about the Suzuki Cappuccino is that it comes with a projector style headlight, which means they can be upgraded rather easily. I had initially just wanted to put some LED bulbs in and call it a day, but Chris from Flyer had other ideas and he had a couple sets of projectors that he wanted to try. So we decided that we would just take a morning and knock it out. absolutely modify this and then basically just bolt the bracket to that. Why can't we just ditch this whole portion mm -hmm. and just use the back? Oh, it's just the focal length. Oh. It's just like, um, it's designed like glasses this. and stuff. Yeah, it's like the distance away from the light source itself is what's gonna determine how much it's focused. So, so we should you, go to the bigger one. If you look at this guy, 100% just gonna be like, lop that whole section off. What? Lop what off? This whole metal okay. raised part. Yeah. And then that will give us this for the lower ball joint mm -hmm. and then these two points of adjustment. And then basically it becomes how do we use these little bolt holes on that, which is obviously super easy, and just attach it to this bracket. So I'm gonna cut it straight across basically even with this. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is nerve wracking because <laughs> it's a no going getting back another thing. set of these is gonna be next to impossible. Yep. Basically, just clear into all of this awesomeness, and so we're gonna sure. we're gonna make sure that any of the material that we have to remove just clears, so this thing can sit completely flush with that. 
mm -hmm. have some issues. Huh? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just gonna take a bunch of little tiny adjustments, but we don't wanna take too much off and cut through this. We're kind of- Getting close. Yeah, we're, we're flirting with, with uh, going too far. can basically test fit this thing in the light. Yeah. The one on the ground right there. And so that's the left side. A lot of this comes down to assembling it 80% of the way, unassembling it. Okay, well, it's been about an hour, hour and a half. We had to move this in and out of the light housing quite a few times to get it aimed properly. Um, Chris walked me through the aiming process. If you wanna learn more about the intricacies of building out one of these kits, I highly recommend going over to Flyride. Check out his YouTube page because he has a lot of tutorials on there on how to do this stuff. The link is in the description. We're now that we have one basically done, uh, we're going to button this one up. I have to build the second headlight really quick now that we know how this all goes together. Chris actually changed out some of the bulbs as well around the car to LEDs, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna go ahead and light this thing up and show all the features and actually show the, where the cutoff is and everything. So some of you guys that like to do headlights um, can see that we've aligned the cutoff and it's about 21 inches from the floor, which looks really great. And then really modernized the front of the car. It's really hard to tell in the shop, but um, it's a much wider light then yellow. Uh, we've also upgraded the turning lights and the daytime running light, which is right here. So we've got LED bulbs throughout the car. But yeah, for a little half day project, this was pretty cool. I did order some new parts for the cappuccino and actually install some new shift boots, a uh, shift boot and e-brake boot. As you can see, mine have seen better days. Um, I went ahead and ordered these online and they just arrived, they're real leather. I went with black stitching on black real leather and I think they will be a really nice compliment look to the uh, center console here. And I'm wondering if maybe I shouldn't do this one in leather as well, but we'll see how it turns out when it's done. As you can see here, we've got the old crusty boot out. Looks like it's got a lot of stains and just general crap built up. This probably had a little bit to do with some of the smells that I'm getting in the car. Um, it's always good to replace or scrub and clean uh, any materials that are originally from the car. So we were able to actually uh, remove these materials and ugh, get rid of the funky smell that goes along with them with nice new leather smell. So this turned out pretty good. Uh, I've never seen this method used before, but they actually just use staples to hold it on. Uh, and it's actually quite effective. So I'm gonna keep carrying on here. Uh, 
went ahead and installed the e-brake boot as well. It has nice Velcro closure on it here so that once we put it in, we can close that up and it'll look good as factory. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss these back in the car and I'll show you guys the finished product. All right, well everything's buttoned back up and back in the car. It's looking pretty minty. Very happy with the way this turned out. Um, paired with the throttle shift knob, it looks beautiful. And then the um, leather boot over here is also very nice and new looking. Really happy with the way this turned out. Um, interior is shaping up to be basically OEM plus, which is what I like in all my cars. Because after all, that is where you spend all your time. So that's it for this mod. We'll catch up with you guys in a minute. Ooh, look at what we got here. It's been just over a month since I purchased this cappuccino, and I know that uh, you know we've put wheels and tires, we've done some other mods to the car, uh, but I really haven't given you guys my driving impression. Uh, we did add a really sticky set of tires to it. As you can hear, it flicks up rocks left and right because of how sticky the tires are. Any rocks I run over get kicked up into the wheel well, which is kind of loud inside the car. So I think I actually need to put some shielding inside the rear wheel tubs. All in all, the sticky tires from Falcon, the RT660s, were the way to go. Uh, this car is basically a go-kart. Um, I can drive it around matted, turn the wheel, and the thing just goes where I want it to go, which is pretty awesome. Um, I do need to be careful though because the differential that's in this thing, I'm not sure how long it's gonna last if I keep taking like off camber turns at full throttle because I can feel or the inside wheel grabbing as it comes back into um, grip. So I gotta be a little cautious that I don't shear off an axle or break the diff, but it has been an absolute uh, heap of fun to drive around now with these wider wheels and tires. So the results of the videos have been pretty overwhelming as far as the comment section saying that you guys want to see more cappuccino content. Now Ricky and I have been working on these cars sort of on our own time, away from the shop or after hours at the shop, and it's been a lot of fun for us because uh, he and I both have our own way of modifying things. Now Ricky's been doing a lot of DIY stuff at home where I've just been cleaning the car up and getting it to a level of cleanliness that I think is acceptable for for me and my overall style and end result that I'm looking to get out of the car. Since you guys were so vocal about wanting to see more cappuccino content, I actually took it upon myself to order quite a few parts from Japan for this car. And so it's a mix of things. So there's some aesthetic stuff and there's quite a few uh, parts that I've ordered uh, for underneath the engine bay as well. and. I ordered a lot of chassis stiffening stuff. As you can hear, there's a lot of flex in this chassis uh, when I hit bumps and stuff. And the noises and rattles that you're hearing are all from this top. The rubber moldings against each other, they make a squeak. So that's one thing that really bothers me when I drive this are the squeaks. I'm trying to figure out a way to silence those squeaks. So if any of you guys have any tricks on how to lubricate the uh, rubber moldings from squeaking, I'd be more than happy to uh, hear those in the comment section and uh, try out whatever uh, you think uh, is appropriate. Uh, as you guys saw previously in this video, we actually you know, modified these headlights pretty extensively, more so than I thought. I had initially reached out to Flyride just to get an LED bulb upgrade. Um, we had ended up doing a whole uh, LED uh, projector upgrade, which was pretty extensive. And I think the overall result was pretty much 100% positive across the board. There's nothing I can say negative about what we did. Um, the cutoff's really good, the bright lights are awesome. 
Uh, I do like the look that it, it basically updated the front of the car to a modern looking car, uh, being that it is only using the outside projector now for high and low beam, which is pretty awesome. It really makes the car look a little wider than it actually is when those are lit up. And also um, keeping the high beam in the side of the projector, it's a lot more controllable than the halogen uh, bright light that it used to use. So overall, that was a 100% improvement for this car and I would recommend it to any cappuccino owners out there. Uh, if you're thinking about it, do it. It's totally worth it. So the other thing I need to address on this car, and it's stuff that's already here on the car, is the ride height. For now, I'm gonna run the car as it is, but in the near future, I will be lowering it some more, and I'm gonna play with uh, some of the suspension adjustments that will allow me to get the car down and hunkered over these wide RT660 grippy tires. So I think as the car evolves, you'll see that the stance is gonna evolve as well, and it will be a lot more aggressive as we go forward. And that leads me to some of the other parts that I've ordered from Japan. These are custom made parts for this car. Um, they are available for other cappuccino owners, but the way that I spec them for the car, they, they will be custom specifically for my cappuccino. I've ordered um, a lot of outside aesthetic items as well as a solution for this cracked dashboard, uh, which this really, really bothers me. Um, if you guys know my other project builds, you know that I don't do well with cracks and uh, things that aren't the way they're supposed to be. So I've got a solution for that coming. I also have a solution for these door panels coming um, that's going to require me to not only add the products I ordered, but also do some some other things to the doors as well to get them up to snuff and uh, make them the way I like them. So I guess to, to round out this whole video, the car is awesome. I drive it every day. It was never meant to be driven every day. I, I bought it as just a toy, but uh, I've absolutely fallen in love with this Suzuki Cappuccino. It's definitely one of the best sports cars I've ever driven in my life. And that's saying a lot for something that only has 65 horsepower. Uh, it is easily one of the most fun cars I've ever driven and I think the mods that I'm going to do to it are going to give the car an outward appearance that's going to match the um, the fun that I'm having in it so hopefully you guys will tag along and join us as Ricky and I continue to mod these cappuccinos so we're going to go ahead and end it there guys thank you so much for subscribing to our channel if you do so already if you don't click that subscribe button turn on your notifications because you don't want to miss a second of what we're doing to these cappuccinos because it's gonna get exciting really fast here. So we'll see you guys in the next one with a lot more awesome content.